Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Sharp R861 combination microwave. And what I want to do today is to show you around the microwave, some of the features and benefits that it offers. Just before I start, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, just give us a quick thumbs up. When I'm recording this video in September 2022, we are finding that there's been a huge surge in electricity prices. And because of that, people are looking for more energy efficient appliances or better ways of cooking your food. Uh, I suppose a lot of people are going pretty much away from like a standard oven, although people are clearly using them. But what they're doing is they're looking at appliances like these, because what you're doing is you're heating up a much smaller area. So if you're only cooking, say, a single tray of something, then rather than putting your whole oven on, then heating up a much smaller area is a lot more energy efficient. When it comes to buying a combination microwave like this, you will find that they can be slightly deeper than normal. It's not just this microwave, it's a lot of the combination microwaves on the market. So as far as the dimensions, first of all, you're looking around 51 centimetres wide, or around 20 inches. The height of it, you're looking around 30 centimetres, or just over 12 inches. And then the depth is it. So front to back, the physical microwave, including the handle, you're looking around just under 50 centimetres, or just over 19 and a half inches. But when it's in operation, you do need to allow space around the microwave because clearly it will get quite warm either around the side or especially at the top. So what Sharp recommend is that you need to allow 20 centimetre gap from the wall on the left and the right hand side and about a 30 centimetre space above the microwave. So if you imagine 30 centimetre there, then that could limit as to where it's going to sit within your kitchen. One thing customers love about the microwave is the pull down door. Uh, now that can make life a lot easier when it comes to getting food in and out rather than having the, the side opening door like on one of the sister models. As you can see in here, this uses something called flatbed technology. So it just, again, makes life a lot easier rather than having the turntable to take out. Um, what you'll also find is when you come to put any dishes or things in here, then you can actually just put them in here at square. Uh, and what I mean by that is in a normal standard microwave, when you've got the turntable, you have to allow space for the dish or plate or whatever it is to turn around. Uh, clearly in here, because there's no turning, because everything is on the flatbed base, then you don't have to worry about it turning. So in other words, you can get a slightly bigger tray in there. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just measure the inside for you. So we've got 31 and a half centimetres, uh, or that's just around 12 and a half inches wide. As far as the height, you're looking around 19 and a half centimetres, or around seven and a half inches high. And then as far as the depth, so going to the very back, you're looking around 30 centimetres, or around 12 inches. Another advantage of having a flatbed base in here is if you do spill something, then it will just sit on the bottom. Uh, you have got a lip running around here, so it's like a rubber lip. So hopefully, as long as too much liquid hasn't spilt out, then it will just sit on the base, just making it a lot easier to keep clean. Rather than having to take the turntable out on a standard microwave and then clean under it, you've got the roller ring as well. So it just makes life a lot easier having this kind of technology. When you first plug the microwave in, you'll notice you've got a really nice white LED display up here. Uh, but what we want to do first is set the clock. And all you need to do is press and hold this button here for three seconds. And once we've done that, so it's saying 24 hours, which I want to do. And, and then once you've selected that, then it's a combination of pressing these buttons at the top here. So you've got the 10 minute, one minute, and then 10 second buttons. And what that will do is that it will enable you to change the time. So at the moment, what have we got? So at the moment it is 7.58 in the morning. I do try and record some videos quite uh, quite early in the morning. You see, see, I've just skipped past that. So it's seven. Again, I've just skipped past that. Anyway, so 7.50, I'm not gonna skip past this one. 7.58 and once we've done that, once we've selected that, then we just press the button again, and that has set the time. And I personally really like that. 
uh, is something that on uh, quite a few people use these kind of clocks as a reference in the kitchen. So for everyday use, it couldn't be easier. Uh, if you just want to put something in and have it on for say 30 or 40 seconds, then if it was just the microwave you wanted, then you just press the microwave power here. Uh, you've got quite a few different power levels. Uh, so this, the P100 refers to the 100% of the microwave power. I must admit, when you first put it on, it's not that clear what it means. So I'll just show you this again. So it starts with 100%, 80, 60, 40, and then 20. So if you wanted something, uh, if you didn't want it on the full power, so if you wanted it on, say, a medium setting, then really you'd select either 60 or 40%. Um, and what that's good for are things like, if, if you're going to cook, some, say, some porridge, then you don't want it to be on a high setting. Uh, personally, I think a lot of people uh, warm things up or they cook things on too high a setting and then they're surprised when it doesn't taste that great. And if you're just using it as the microwave, once you've selected the power that you want, for example, if you wanted it on the 80% setting, then all you need to do is just select one of the options above. So if you wanted it on for 10 minutes, then you just press the 10 minute button and then press start at the bottom here. Uh, if you wanted it on, for example, for say two and a half minutes, then once you've selected the microwave power at 80%, then just press that button. So you press that twice, two minutes 30, then press start. So then you've got the grill. So if you just wanted to grill something, then you have got the option on here. And all you do is you set the grill setting, put the time in there. So if you want it on for three minutes, then just press start. Uh, we'll just show you a couple of accessories it comes with. So you do get the, the tray, and this is excellent for uh, things like, just come around the other side of the camera. So things like, I suppose, bacon. Also you get this, which is a little grilling rack. And again, this is ideal just for raising the height of anything you want to put in. So if you want to put it in like that, then it's just raising it up so it is closer to the grill at the top there. But the next option on here is the microwave and grill. And what this would do, this actually combines, as it says, the microwave and the grill together. Uh, I suppose this is really good if you're cooking, for example, something like a jacket potato, where if you want to cook the inside of the potato, but then you want to give it a really nice crispy skin, then this can be a very good option. Uh, so the first one is the combination one, and what that would do, that will actually cook on the microwave for 10 seconds, and then the grill for 23 seconds. And that makes one cycle, and then it will repeat that. The second option is the combination two. And what that will do is that will cook in the microwave for 18 seconds, and then the grill for 15 seconds. So it's a little bit more balanced. Um, I suppose really it's a case of trial and error when it comes to using that option. Uh, it could be a case of trying it with, say, a couple of, for example, things like jacket potatoes. Uh, to start with and then seeing which is the best way to go and then when you press the convection button Then that's just the oven that will be used and this changes in temperature each time you press the convection button So this goes from 200 degrees all the way down to 110 degrees centigrade And then it goes back up to 200 uh, And I suppose the idea of this this is one of the reasons that people are buying a lot of these type of combination microwaves because you're heating up a much smaller capacity then that can save a huge amount on the electricity that's been used. Then the final option on here is the microwave and convection. And what that would do is that combines the oven and the microwave. So I mentioned the about the jacket potatoes with the grill earlier, uh, where you're using the microwave and grill option. Um, if you didn't really get on with that, then you can use the microwave and convection uh, oven to do things like jacket potatoes. Other options on here, so you've got things like the defrost option uh, and what this will en enable you to do is to either uh, defrost something by time or weight. Uh, so if you know, clearly if you know the weight of something, uh, if you wanted to defrost say some bread, if you weigh it, say if it's 300 gr grams, then once you've selected the weight defrost, then just press that and then press start and it will know roughly how long to microwave for to defrost the food. You've also got some auto menu options uh, and these are six preset uh, foods that are put within the microwave. 
Um, and really the idea is, I suppose, if you're not too sure on how long to heat things up for or put them in the microwave, then these just take the guesswork out for you. Uh, but again, you've got the jacket potatoes that I've mentioned several times. Then you've got the pizza. So if you press that, then you press it three times, depending on how much pizza you, you want to put in here. Um, and what this would do, there's nothing, I suppose, when it comes to pizza, um, a lot of people, if you've had a pizza the night before, you're not quite finished it, you want to warm it up, the standard option is to stick it in the microwave. And then it comes out really soggy, and I'll be honest, it's not that great. I say that from personal experience. So I suppose even I've learned to try and use some of these preset programs. And what the pizza setting will do is it doesn't just use the microwave, this actually uses the oven, so it uses the convection at 160 degrees. Um, it doesn't take long to do it, but personally I think it's well worth the wait. So as I say, 150, 300 grams or 450 grams. In my household, we would very, very rarely have 450 grams of pizza left. Then you've got rice, oven chips, cake, roast chicken as the final four options on the auto menu. Often while I'm making a video, I do have a cup of coffee going on in the background, uh, but at the moment I've actually let it get cold, so I thought this is just a great opportunity to pop the cup in the microwave and let's just warm it up. So all I want to do is not going to take long, I'll probably say 30 seconds in the microwave. So all I'm going to do is press microwave. Uh, I'd, I'd say it doesn't even need the full power, so let's reduce it to 80%. And if we pop it on for 30 seconds, then press start. As you can see, it shows you a little indicator. Uh, it just says cooking at the moment, and clearly it's counting down. Now that's finished, just open the door and we have got a nice hot cup of coffee again. If you're thinking of buying one of these microwaves, I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. Hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Sharp R861 combination microwave. As I mentioned earlier, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up and leave any comments below. I always ask for comments on the video, whether it's good or bad, whether you enjoyed it, whether you didn't enjoy it. Uh, if you have got any questions on the microwave, perhaps you might have come onto this video to look at something and I've not mentioned it. So if, if that's the case, then just pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Also, if you have got one of these, either this model, the R861, or the sister model, the R860, because they are very similar, uh, then just let me know what you think about it, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.